uh, genetic technologies. We are looking at the uses of current technologies, reproductive technologies, cloning, recombinant DNA, beneficial to, um, benefits to agriculture, agricultural medicine, um, medical and industrial applications, and effects on biodiversity of agricultural biotechs and influence of social, economic and cultural context. So genetic technology, we've got reproductive technologies, um, artificial insemination, in vitro fertilization and artificial pollination, cloning technologies, whole organism cloning, that's becoming a thing. Um, you know, um, we're obviously looking at genetically modified crops, but we're also looking at, for instance, mammals. Like there's, um, um, it was quite an assignment a while back, but like camel, um, one of the camels from Saudi Arabia, um, it w there was a clone of the camel, can't remember the name, it had a really cute name, but there's so many examples here, cow, big one, um, what's the, goat, the big, oh, it's a big example of the sheep, the goat, one of them, I've forgotten it, but, um, you will see lots of examples of whole organism cloning, please, if you have any questions, please pop them up, um, I had, I do see a question, what tutoring is available from Adenote, so there is, like I said, group Zoom, that's a tutoring, tutor spot, and there's also one-on-one -on -one private tutoring. But anyways, so whole organism cloning, therapeutic cloning, so therapeutic cloning, sorry, so that's medicine and gene cloning um, as an industry. So medicine and industry. Recombinant DNA technology. So that helps us with gene sequencing. That's helpful for medicine and research. Transgenesis, um, helpful for agriculture and biotech. Gene therapy for medicine. ELISA, medicine and CRISPR. So that's a tool and we'll talk about it. So these technologies, medicine and molecular tool. So... Compare the processes and outcomes of reproductive, of reproductive technologies, including but not limited to artificial insemination, artificial pollination, so artificial insemination, injection of semen into the uterus without sexual intercourse, so select animals with favorable trait to breed, synchronized births avoid injuries, in vitro fertilization, egg is fertilized outside the body, for fertility treatments that are used to achieve um, successful human pregnancies, allows embryo screening prior to implementation. Artificial pollination, that her, um, creation of new plants with favorable traits like pure breeding, right, or crossbreeding. Um, you would have looked at Mendel in module five um, and how he talked about the ratio as well um, with artificial pollination. So artificial pollination, insemination, passing on favorable genes to offspring, increased efficacy of livestock industry. However, it may lead to limited genetic variability in vitro fertilization, artificial pollination. Here is another practice question. Won't have the time to go through it, but please have a go at it yourself. I've got the answers up here. Um, and yeah, and hopefully they help you sort of figure out the structure too. Cloning, so somatic cell nuclear transfer. Dolly, Dolly the sheep, finally. I was like, there's, there's something there. Yes, someone just posted up there too. Dolly the sheep, thank you. Um, I forgot Dolly. But yes, Dolly the sheep, whole organism cloning. I was confused, I was like, the sheep or go but anyway somatic cell nuclear transfer so adult cell removed from the organism that you want to clone the unfertilized egg is removed from the donor and it's denucleated sorry denucleated so you take the um so it's empty basically and the new and the denucleated uh nucleated the ne oh goodness that's a mouthful denucleated egg and the stem cell are fused the cell is cultured um it begins to divide and become an embryo an embryo is implanted into a surrogate organism the surrogate gives birth to an organism which is then genetically ident uh, identical to the donor so the effectiveness here the offspring may not be strictly identical to parents somatic cell mutations mitochondria epigenetics expensive but it's um expensive it's not time efficient and props better just to clone you know um organs rather than whole um whole cloning whole organism cloning gene cloning so creating lots of copies of a gene of interest so assembling recombinant dna so identify the target gene remember we're not so we've got the target gene cut the gene in um Cut the gene out or order it online. Treat gene fragment and plasmid with restriction enzymes. It creates the sticky ends that are going to stick. Combine sticky ends with um, will come together by base pairing affinity. And so then we are treating um, that solution with DNA ligase to repair the backbone. Replicate DNA, insert recombinant plasmid into host bacteria because they'll be super microfactories. Host bacteria will express the gene lots and lots to produce their protein of interest. Alternatively, if your aim is DNA, not protein, we also have PCR. What's P um, so we'll talk about PCR in a second. Um, all right, so recombinant DNA technology methods to join together DNA from two different species in order to produce new genetic combinations. So, well, okay. I don't know what happened there for a second. Sorry, we were far ahead. 
Where is it? No, it's after Dolly the sheep. Okay, there we go. Okay, so recombinant and DNA technology methods to join together DNA. So we're doing this from two different species. So transgenesis is the introduction of exo I'm sorry about the noise once again, exogenous genetic material into an organism. So performed, so organism exhibits a new trait. DNA is ubiquitous across organisms. Therefore, we are able to insert new genes into the genomes and code for the new traits. Um, the methods of insertion are this plasmids, so those um, circular things, so circularized bacterial DNA, retroviral vectors, so transfection, and finally DNA microinjection. So that's a fine glass needle that's going to inject the DNA. How do we make a transgenic organism? Fun fact. Uh, so how do we do it? So firstly, identify our genes. Then we get large amounts of those genes of interest and we insert it into a target organism. So gene sequencing allows us to gather that single nucleotide information. We are able to identify the gene. Um, and from this information, we can order genes to then insert into other organisms. Step two, um, we use PCR. So PCR, polymerase chain reaction, it amplifies the DNA. So one copy becomes thousands of copies. And so it's used so that gene cloning is more efficient. Then technique, um, that's technique two, but there's also technique three where we look at gel electrophoresis. So that's where we're visualizing the DNA and we're checking whether we have the right type of DNA that we need. You know, you don't want to do this whole process and then end up with the wrong type of DNA. Step three, restriction enzyme cloning. So we treat the gene of interest plus a bacterial plasmin with the same restriction enzyme. It's going to create those sticky ends, which are then stuck together by DNA ligase. And then that creates a recombinant plasmid with a DNA, which is then transformed into bacteria. So you would have looked at, um, you will look at, you know, um, antibacterials, you'll look at the information of, um, you look at the information of antibacterials using this process as well, when you study this module. Um, Technique five is transfection. It uses a virus as a vector to put a gene into the target cell. Can be used to insert genes into a different cell type, so mammalian plant. Um, so we place the gene of interest into the viral genome. This is inserted into the organism of interest and, and then the, uh, when the virus affects it. Finally, we are inserting that into our organism. So we do that using DNA microinjection. So just um, inject the DNA in there. You know, we use a small needle because cells are small. So isolate the DNA, we do DNA sequencing, we do DNA sequencing, we identify genome sequences, um, creates lots of copies of the genes, gel electrophoresis, uh, electrophoresis, we verify that gene, we put the gene into an organism and we are able to then transform it. We also have a look at we also do that with viruses um, and use transfection as a technique, or we can use microfections. Either three of them works. So recombinant DNA technologies, we have BT cottons. Um, we, uh, we have BT cottons, and a medical example is the production of insulin um, in E. coli, which is bacteria. Gene therapy, right, the correction of genetic disorders by the introduction of normal functional cells. Um, by, introdu by introducing healthy genetic material, the cell and its offspring may have restored function. CRISPR-Cas9, so that is, there are two parts. First part, it guides the RNA containing that nucleotide sequence of the anticodons, complementary to the gene that you want to edit, you want to cut out the part that you don't need. And then the second, the Cas9 part, will endonuclease enzyme, it cuts the DNA that we need. ELISA is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, so a math tool, an analytical biochemistry tool which is used to detect the presence of antigens in a liquid sample. So a diagnostic tool which exploits natural antigens, antibody interactions, um, levels of biomolecules in a sample, so they can be used to measure by linking levels of antigens or antibodies. So it's useful for forensic epidemiology. Another practice question here, unfortunately we won't have the time to go through it, but um, I've highlighted the key terms for you here. Have a go at it and then, you know, have a, and then match up with my answers over here and see, you know, what you were lacking, how you could have improved, um, or how my, you know, how I could have, how in that specific sample answer, I could have added something else too. Like it always works in both ways. Um, agricultural, so we've got techniques and benefits, selective breeding, artificial poll um, pollination, transgenesis, 
benefits, you know, we get more crops, high yields, more nutritional value. Medicine, we've got cloning, gene sequencing, gene therapy, benefits are, there's personalized medicine, right, treatment of those genetic diseases, improved diagnostic tools, um, creation of molecules which can be used for medical treatments like insulin and diabetes. Industry, gene cloning, sequencing, transgenesis, what are the benefits? There's increased speed of chemical reaction, enzymes, creation of organisms which produce industrially significant products, biofuels, biomaterials, energy, etc. So what are the effects on biodiversity? Positives, crops are you know, insect resistant, they don't use harsh chemicals. Negatives, like we discussed earlier, ability for GM, uh, GM crops to out um, to outcompete, you know, unnatural crops. Evaluation, this was the part that I want you to think about, not coming back to it. Agricultural practices that are driven primarily by short-term benefit have always posed a threat to biodiversity, you know. With increasing technology, we are seeing this. But biotechnology gives us tools to enact this at a more rapid speed um, on a more fundamental level. Biotech has a huge potential to help the agricultural industry, but it needs to be used wisely. So biotech bubble science, there's a huge range of um, technologies here, and that is something you will research as you come across it. So what gets made and used is, product, is a product of many interlinking factors. Science research is not objective, it's subjective to researchers and fields. Um, and biotech is, interest, is important, helpful, interesting um, and profitable. So I've got examples here. Um, we look at golden rice, BT corn, and also virus resistant papaya. So what are the social implica uh, implications, economic and cultural? So this is it here. You can have... A